In 1981, the Pentagon announced a competition under the ATF, Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. The newly elected President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, canceled the detente policy towards the USSR. As a result of the ATF program, it was planned to build 750 aircrafts. This is a huge order. Therefore, almost all aircraft manufacturers in the United States joined the race. Boeing, General Dynamics, Lockheed, Northrop Grumman, and McDonnell Douglas reached the semifinals. By 1986, two companies, Lockheed and Northrop, made it to the finals of the race for the right to build an aircraft. Under previous agreements, the manufacturers merged into two teams. Boeing and General Dynamics joined Lockheed, and Northrop Grumman concluded a partnership agreement with McDonnell Douglas. An $86 billion slice of the pie is extremely big. It should be enough for everyone. The companies were given 50 months to create flight prototypes. By mid-1990, the Northrop McDonnell Douglas team was the first to unveil their YF-23 prototypes. Two copies of the YF-23 were built. The first one was named Black Widow II. The second one, Gray Ghost. Externally, the planes differed in color. The interiors were more different. The YF-23 Black Widow had the Pratt and Whitney engines. General Electric engines were installed on the YF-23 Grey Ghost prototype. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. We are regularly coming out with new videos and want you to be there for all of them. Why did everyone at Edwards AFB California gasp when the YF-23 prototypes rolled out of the hangar on June 22, 1990? Let's start with its construction and design. Northrop and McDonnell Douglas engineers gave the YF-23 an unexpected look. The committee expected to see something like a flying wing. This design was implemented by the Northrop company on the B-2 Spirit Bomber, which had just been launched. By the way, within the framework of this program, Northrop spent $44 billion. We'll get back to this later. But instead of a flying wing, committee members saw the fighters with diamond-shaped wings. If you look at the YF-23 from above, you will notice that the chopped edges of the airframe are either parallel or strictly perpendicular to each other. This design contributes to weak reflective performance of the aircraft. Instead of traditional vertical and horizontal fins, the prototypes of the Y-23 used two one-piece swivel panels as the empennage. The planes were located at the angle of approximately 45 to 50 degrees from the vertical axes. The airplanes looked unusual for that time and extremely brutal because of the chop shape. Only a single seat cockpit had the streamlined drop shape profile. Also, the flat nozzles of the engine can be attributed to the stealth asset of the aircraft. Please note that the nozzles are located in the upper plane of the airframe. The recessed nozzle design reduced the visibility of the YF-23 in the infrared range during supersonic flight without afterburner. The proprietary approach of the Northrop designers, who created the B-52 Spirit, was obviously there. To make the surfaces adjacent to the nozzle withstand the high temperature of the jet, they were protected with a special material. The engineers had to use space technologies for this. The same heat sink material is used on space shuttles. During the test, it turned out that the YF-23 fully meets the requirements of the competition. Let us recall the main criteria of the ATF program announced by the Pentagon were stealth, short takeoff and landing, high maneuverability, and supersonic cruising speed without afterburner. The YF-23 prototype turned out to be slightly longer than its predecessor, Eagle. 20.54 meters versus the F-15's 19.43 meters. The wingspan was practically the same, 13.29 meters versus 13.6 meters. The YF-23 was noticeably lower than the Eagle, 
4.23 meters versus 5.64 meters. But the most interesting thing is that the wing area of the YF-23 was 87.80 meters squared. For the F-15, the number is 56.5 meters squared. The difference is huge, as you can see. The larger wing area, the higher the lift. This means that the YF-23 fighter could take more weapons on board. The diamond-shaped wing configuration had a deep meaning, not the purpose of surprising the committee with an unusual design. The high drag coefficient, which is usually found in wings of this design, was compensated by a movable console on the leading edge of the YF-23 wing. The maximum speed shown by the YF-23 prototypes during the test was Mach 2.2. This is less than the F-15s. However, we must not forget that we are talking about a prototype actually assembled by hand. In the course of improvements, this figure slightly increases. In short, an outstanding aircraft with great prospects for improving its flight qualities appeared before the Edwards AFB committee. What did the competitors show? The YF-22 looked less revolutionary. Its design was reminiscent of the F-15 and F-18 fighters. Its flight characteristics were considered impressive. Engineers from the Lockheed, Boeing, General Dynamics team also completed the Pentagon's assignment. However, the YF-23 prototype surpassed the competitor in terms of range and stealth. The diamond-shaped wings played an important role. The YF-23 took off more easily, and thanks to the pivoting consoles, the aerodynamic drag at transonic speeds decreased. The flight turned out to be more efficient. Neither observer nor test pilot had any doubts that the FAT contract would be won by the YF-23, Northrop McDonnell Douglas team, and the world's first fifth-generation fighter would receive the F-23 index. We have already mentioned the $44 billion allocated to the production of the B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. Together with the new contract for the construction of the fighter, Northrop didn't have to care about the financial side of their business for the next few years. However, Donald Rice, head of the committee and secretary of the U.S. Air Force, announced the YF-22 prototype as the winner of the competition. As for the power plants, the committee preferred the aircraft from Pratt & Whitney. For everyone involved in the creation of the YF-23, the news of losing the competition was a cold shower. Why did the committee make such a decision? The first reactions of independent military experts pointed to the cunning of the Lockheed, Boeing, General Dynamics team. They said that the tests of the YF-22 were carried out using weapons, although this was not a requirement of the Pentagon. It was the shooting that impressed the committee members. We dismiss this version the armaments and avionics of the YF-23 from Northrop McDonnell Douglas and the YF-22 from Lockheed, Boeing, General Dynamics were identical. At this stage of testing, the issue of armament was not of fundamental importance and that the engines were the same. Other malicious talks were about the decision in favor of the YF-22 being dictated not by technical characteristics, but by financial issues. Northrop already had a $44 billion contract for Spirit in its pocket. Add more than $80 billion on top of that for a new fighter, and it turns out that a huge resource has been concentrated in the hands of one developer. But even these circumstances could not become crucial, because we are talking about the country's security. Some experts argue that the contract was given to the Lockheed Boeing General Dynamics team because of personal relations and a more powerful leadership lobby in the top Pentagon offices. This might be possible as well. However, today, more than 30 years after the competition, we affirm that the decisions of the committee, voiced by Donald Rice, turned out to be correct in the end due to the technical characteristics of the YF-23 and YF-22. The only thing in which the YF-23 was slightly inferior to its competitor was its maneuverability. But the diamond wing was not the reason. Flaperons and ailerons on the trailing edge of the wing gave the YF-23 excellent controllability. 
but the maneuverability of the YF-23 was not as outstanding as that of the YF-22. The prototype of the Lockheed Boeing General Dynamics team used a thrust vector control mechanism. It turned out to be much more efficient than the mechanical adjustments on the wing. The future Raptor showed literally acrobatic agility, so it looked more dynamic. We considered this factor to be the key one in the decision of the committee. If we recall that the main goal of the new fifth generation fighter was the ability to withstand the Soviet and then the Russian Su-27 and MiG-29, then the committee made the right decision. Russian fighters were already in service by that time. Their characteristics correspond to American prototypes. But modifications with the controlled thrust vector were being prepared for production. By that time, it was already clear that this technology was extremely promising. This argument is confirmed now, 30 years later. All the latest fighters are equipped with jet deflection mechanisms. It was impossible to improve the YF-23 in this respect and equip it with rotary nozzles. The design of the airframe would not allow the implementation of a deflected thrust vector even in the future. Therefore, all other things being equal, the committee gave their preference to the prototype in which thrust vector control was initially provided. Northrop McDonnell Douglas lost rightly. The only thing that can reassure the Northrop management today is the future fate of the competitor. After the collapse of the USSR, the Pentagon decided to reduce the initial production plan from 750 aircrafts to 295. Then, in 2001, this number decreased significantly. It seemed to the new generation of American politicians that the Russian bear was defeated forever. Today, there is no doubt that this was a flawed strategy. The last 187th combatant Raptor left Lockheed Martin on December 13, 2011, including eight pre-production 195 Raptor samples. The slice of the pie was not so big after all. Fortunately, the F-22 did not have to face its counterparts Su-27 and MiG-29, thanks to which it was created. However, the Raptor performed well in Syria in 2014. This was the first combat use of the world's first fifth-generation fighter. For six months, the Raptor made more than a hundred successful sorties. The fate of the YF-23 was happier. Black Widow II ended up in the U.S. Air Force National Museum in Dayton, Ohio. Grey Ghost was transferred to the Western Museum of Flight which is located in Terrence Airport, California.